escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Corporate Escape Stories interview series, where we invite influencers, experts, and fellow unconventional humans to discuss big ideas for the new future of freedom-based careers and lifestyles. So in today's chat show, I'm really excited to discuss how you can handle criticism and dream crushers you're about to embark uh, when you're about to embark on your escape journey from your traditional nine to five. Uh, so in our conversation today, we're going to be discussing the strategies to understand, interpret, and deal with critics and dream crushers. And we're going to be sharing how you can navigate these conversations with the people in your life, as well as invite the right support systems to help you persevere towards your goals. So joining me today are Ella Cook and Felicia Peterson, uh, two amazing ladies who I've coached to create their freelance careers and independent businesses. So they know a thing or two about making big transitions in their life and work and how to deal with these negative uh, Nancys or Nancys sayers to pursue a life less ordinary. So welcome to the show, ladies, and thank you for joining me for this awesome conversation. Thank you. So for people who don't know who you are, Ella, you've been on the show a couple times, uh, but people could be watching you for the first time as well. Uh, could you do a quick little intro about who you are, where you're from, where you transitioned from, uh, and what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah. So even if people have seen me before, things have changed so much. I haven't seen you um, in your tropical me. outfits yet because you just moved. Yeah, out. I'm rocking, <laughs> rocking the palm tree with my beautiful palm tree view. Well, I'm in Bali now, um, which is really exciting. So um, I um, was a digital marketer by trade, um, studied advertising, um, and sort of fell into a digital marketing career. Did that for eight years. Um, and then last year sort of decided that I wanted uh, something different, a life on my terms and a, a real change in lifestyle. And um, back then I had a fiance, so we had some shared goals of, of sort of traveling together, but uh, that didn't work out. <laughs> and um, uh, So that relationship ended five months ago and that saw me coming to Bali on my own. So um, in the time that we've worked together, Lydia, I built a digital marketing business and agency that um, works with a whole range of clients, but specifically I wanted to work with life and business coaches. Uh, there's a real alignment of values there. Um, so I'm still going through a bit of a transition myself and sort of trying to re readjust or re-navigate um, uh, how I build that business to really fulfill me and align with my own values. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and it's a hell of a ride. I'm, I'm loving it. And yes. I think that this conversation today is, is super relevant because one of the biggest things that um, will hold anybody back is the doubt. And that comes from yourself, but also from other people. So I yeah, I was just going to say, you know, the critics are, the critics are never just about external people. Some of our biggest mm -hmm. critics is ourselves, right? Like, so yeah, we're going to have and, and all, the, <laughs> all three of us have gone through all that. Uh, and it's going to be a great way to actually, you know, talk about that and be honest about that journey. Because I think a lot of the messaging out there is always like, be brave and just like jump and right. do it. And like, there'll be a safety net and like, you know, you'll be, you, you'll just be like a Tony Robbins and it'll be fine. But not all of it'll us are fine. built that way. Yeah. You know, not all of us are resilient and strong right away. It's kind of a bit like a muscle, right? Like that we have yeah. to train and sort of discern that information of like, what's actually happening between us and the inner critic and not to be like, shut the fuck up. But actually, like, what it is, is it trying to tell me that I can sort of make small tweaks on? So I'll be really excited to jump into that with you because I know mm -hmm. that's been a very personal journey for you, right? To transition yeah. from that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Felicia, yeah. um, can you give a good, a good, good little intro as well about who you are, where you're from, what you used to do, and what you've been uh, working towards in your goals so far? Absolutely. Um, so I am from Sweden originally, and I've lived in Australia for coming up to 10 years. And in that time, which is basically the most of my grown adult life, um, I've worked mostly in marketing. And the last few years before doing this uh, transition, I also moved into film and TV um, and produ producing. And uh, what I did at the end before I jumped, jumped out in the open was um, just a part-time role in um, in admin and that was while I was starting to build uh, what I now do full-time which is um, brand storytelling and marketing strategy and as part of that um, visual content production as well so it's photography and videography and sometimes copy but that's the main the main that I'm doing we're fo focusing on now Perfect. and um, yeah it's amazing because it means that I can spend some time in Sweden and Australia so that's uh, what we've been working towards and now we're there 
Yeah, and it's been great to sort of explore, right, the different skill sets of how they yeah. intertwine. Because sometimes things like copywriting and photography and website, you know, management could seem like separate skills, you know, when you look at it on a sort of like pragmatic level. Uh, but when you sort of see where the ties that bind, like what, what is that essence, right, or that energy that you're really trying to convey, right, in the work that you do, there's a lot of things that actually marry together, right? And I love yeah. the idea of sto that, that brand storytelling because that can be done through photography, can be done through your website design, and it could be done through your copywriting. Everything is a story, which is really awesome for you to be able to explore and experiment, right? In your freelance transition so far of like what things stick well for you and also, you know, what, what marries well together, right? In, in your experiment of helping clients uh, move forward uh, with their brand, right? And in the digital realm. Um, so I want to start the conversation by um, really, you know, you guys have, have gone through, right? Some of, uh, you know, Ella, you've obviously been doing this for almost a year now, right? Since you started coaching with me. Uh, Felicia, you're like nine months or so maybe or six to nine months, right? So you're both in sort of similar journeys of transition. Both of you have quit your nine to five and lots of things happened before you quit. And there's been a lot of sorts of personal oh, obstacles, yeah. right? And external <laughs> obstacles that have come into play. And it wasn't always a smooth flowing ride, right? To get to the first goal, right? Of leaving your job. Um, the first question I have for you ladies is like, how, how were you able to recognize these people who were dream crushers and critics in your life? Like, was it really obvious that people were just like negative naysayers or, you know, um, was it sort of more subtle, you know, to recognize sometimes the negativity that could be surrounding the community of people that you're hanging out with or, or giving you advice? Um, Ella, how was that journey for you to recognize these critics and, and naysayers in your life? Yeah, look, it, I think it was, um, I, I, I'm really fortunate um, in that I have really wonderful friends who are, are supportive of me no matter what. But obviously, you know, with, especially with my job, um, you know, I couldn't really choose the people that I was surrounded with um, in, that, in that environment. That's just who I got lumped with. Um, and so for, for me, uh, to, be, to be honest, my, my biggest critic, and then we mentioned at the beginning of the call, is, has been myself. That's the biggest issue or challenge person I've had to deal with. Most other people externally I can handle pretty well. Um, I kind of just go, yeah, 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 cool. Well, I'll prove you wrong. Um, that's a, a larger conversation, but I think that the biggest one um, really has been myself. Uh, you know, things that might not be good enough for me are more than good enough for other people. Mm. You know, my expectations of myself are huge, um, which has its benefits and definitely, you know, has gotten me to where I am. But it, it, it means that that sort of that inner conflict um, and, and my self-talk is, 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 has been really shit. <laughs> like I've been really, really hard on myself, which has just made the jo the journey less enjoyable. Like I said, it does have its place and it does have its, you know, um, I, I guess, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's place. But in terms of recognizing that, um, I've found that talking to other people has been really helpful. You know, working with you has been exceptionally helpful in that space. You know, I had even had a session with you yesterday um, and you, you know, just kind of going, well, like maybe that isn't true. And, you know, is it just you that thinks that? And let's have a think about what, how you've been, you know, successful or that's had a positive um, sort of outcome in that area. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you measure yourself up against yourself all the time. Um, mm. And sometimes it's good to compare yourself in a, a you know, not, not a judgmental way, but kind of look at how you're adding value to, to people around you and get feedback from other people as well to kind of either validate the criticism because sometimes, you know, you fuck up and you, or you do something wrong or you don't give it your best effort and you need that feedback. But, uh, you know, other times, most of the time, um, you know, you, you've been too, too hard on yourself. Mm. But, but recognizing that has been a, a really big journey for me because I kind of just lived in a very unaware bubble for a really long time. And I think the, the recognizing when um, something's serving me and not has been kind of a recent, um, a recent thing. And it's tied into a whole you know, um, journey really of, um, being kinder to myself, but also just being more self-aware and, um, and, and listening to myself. Um, and I, I did, I did want to mention as well, uh, I hope that she doesn't watch this, but my mom, <laughs> despite, despite her unwavering and unconditional love for me has been uh, a big challenge. And it's not, it's not because she doesn't love me and it's not because she doesn't support me. Um, but she, she cares a lot about, uh, 
um, my financial security, my happiness is is her utmost priority. But you know, as as with any parents, and I know I'm not alone with this. I've spoken to people about it even this week. There's such a generational gap between um, what our parents, you know, expected from life and what was available to them, um, and 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 what I have, you know, my generation have available to us, and also what what we expect from life, you know, and. Um, despite her, um, her her positive you know support and she will always you know stand by me and always stick beside me um, I because of the relationship that we have it's been difficult not to take the well, why are you doing that and is that a sensible decision why are you gonna quit your job do you have enough money you know like those things are not necessarily um, her saying you can't do it um, but she's kind of offering you know the, the rational uh, uh, level of, of support and, and criticism but I think because of the relationship I had with her I took it so personally you know kind of going she thinks I can't do it and and that was good in in fueling the the challenge you know and, and the, com the competitive nature within me but it also left me sort of feeling like I had something to prove um, so so you know recently I've decided specifically only to share certain things with her when I want her feedback write genuine feedback and want to sound ideas off her um, and kind of limit the amount that I, I choose to tell her. And the same could be said for anybody around me that I don't think is going to be able to contribute real value to my decision making process is I kind of limit what I tell them. I used to tell everything to everybody because I wanted everyone's feedback. I wanted to tell everyone what I was doing, share the love, I'm so excited. But I just, I realized that it, it, it drains the energy out of me. And if I'm not going to get anything useful back from them it's kind of a waste of time and sure they can watch and I can you know check in with them at, at a later stage but um I think that's going to be a better journey for for us and also you know I don't um it's it's I, I don't need to take it personally it's not about me actually and all that matters is that um I do I do what I say I'm going to do and if I change my mind then that's the biggest thing my mum says <laughs> well that's not what you were doing last week <laughs> I'm like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I changed my mind and it's my prerogative to do that. But um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, so glad, I'm, I'm so glad you talked about like, you know, the generation gap because, and also the projection of like other people's advice or Absolutely. opinions are based on their life, right? Like same thing with my mom, you know, we were immigrants from Malaysia. She like, she's like the best thing we ever, I ever did was stayed with HSBC for 35 years and got my pension plan. And like, that was totally the right thing for her to do. Cause back in her day, there were no digital nomads and technology Absolutely. to help her do her work. Like, like, you know, her goals were very different and she lived in a different day and age. So her concerns are for sure, uh, you know, from an intent to love and intent to take care of me. But we have to be, you know, very mindful, as you said, about who we do talk to about our dreams, because the dream crushers are the ones that are usually quite, you know, they, they're either not having the same goals as you, not living the life that you want to live. So they don't really have opinions that are in alignment with your end goals, mm -hmm. you know, or it could be also a projection of their own insecurity. Like I, I know when I first start talking to my friends who had corporate jobs and like had climbed the corporate ladder and gave up their souls to make, you know, 150 grand a year, very likely my actions of leaving my six figure job was sort of triggering them because they're like, oh my God, maybe I am too burning out and this is not the way it should be. But then I have to yeah. also reinvent my life and that's too hard. So I'd rather be like telling myself, you know, why I should stay. And that sometimes, be, think, you know, it, it comes out, it's projected as uh, they're warning you to not leave your job, but they're actually just talking to themselves, right? To validate the position that they're in. And it's really, really important to, um, you know, al align ourselves with the right people where we can look at their lives right. or their goals and go, hey, we are the same weirdo and we actually have the same values and I'm not a weirdo because we're both actually wanting the same thing. And you're going to get more sound advice too, right? From people who are living that lifestyle or making those choices like you are. And so you're getting real advice that's going to help propel you right forward to that future you want rather than advice that's just about fear mongering tactics and, you know, a, a place that um, isn't going to feel good because in the beginning of your journey, you are vulnerable, right? You are feeling not brave completely just yet. So the more important at this state of your journey, you have to be surrounded right by the right people uh, to mm -hmm. be able to do just that. Now, Felicia, um, when Very, you decided to say oh, one, more thing, yeah, one more thing, yeah, I just wanted to say about the projecting thing. I think that's really important. Um, and I noticed it when I, when I was making the decision to leave my fiance as well, um, mm. you know, talking about why I was unhappy or what the reason for those, that move was hugely threatened other people's relationships and the status that they had of their own. And that actually 
that happening in my personal life sort of helped me to understand more how it can happen in my sort of professional career. You know, if, if anything that you're doing is a threat to somebody's identity and way of being, they are automatically not going to buy into that. It's only people that you share values with. So if somebody is giving you negative feedback, that's the first place I'd look is going, is this, is this something that, that like a fear that they might share as well? And could this a hundred percent be or 90% be, them, them projecting um, onto me. And as soon as I realized that with the relationship, I was like, I'm not taking advice from these people. <laughs> like, it's not, yeah. it's not the space I want to be in. And that was really helpful. So yeah, yeah so I just absolutely. To say. Yeah. No, really, really good point about that. Uh, Felicia. So when you decided to sort of leave, you know, your uh, sure thing, right. Of what it is that, um, you know, you were doing for a living and sort of, you may have had these goals of what you think your life should have been. And you changed course, right. One day from whatever things that sort of came into your life to made you realize, right. That you needed a change in your life. Um, how did you sort of, um, deal with people that may have sort of poo pooed on your dream where they're like, are you sure that's the right thing to do? Uh, I, I, you know, you, you have a partner as well that, you know, you're, you're a boyfriend that you're with and, you know, parents and all that, uh, that you're with. And, and so how did you sort of not take things personally, you know, when you had a parent like Ella's where that, you know, they should be warning you of your like throwing your life away, uh, and being completely irresponsible, right. About, um, the way that you're constructing your new way of living and working. How do you not th take things personally? Well, I think Ella wrapped up a lot of things, um, in what she would describe before as well. And I think what's, what's helped me a lot is to, sorry, it's very bouncy, this table. Um, what's helped me a lot is to actually focus on myself. Like, why do I want to do this change? And, um, and really re like define that and remember why I'm taking that step. And then like, absolutely what, what Ella is saying is really um, looking at the people that are being a ne negative about it, I think to myself, do I want their lives? Is, is that what I want? And if, and most of the time people are negative, exactly what we've been mentioning already is because they either, they care a lot about you and they, they want the best for you. And if they have a life that they're happy with or somewhat happy with, they want the best for you. And they think that that's, you know, why would you go and risk what you have? for something that is, there's not a lot of proofs of that it works or whatever it might be. Mm. Um, but it, it, again, it's to remember, it's to remember why you do it and, and surround yourself with people that believe in what you're trying to achieve. And for me, like both yourself and Ella has been amazing powers of, of that for me. Um, and obviously the, the Academy of Cubicle Crashes as well. Like, it's just been a place where you can go and, and get that support and people that cheer you on. And, and, and I think that it's easier also if you, because like with any journey, you're always going to have a bit of pitfalls or something that doesn't go the way that you planned or, and um, to better, to better help um, I, with that process, I try to not share as much, like Ella was saying, with, yeah. with people that don't understand your journey, share those things with people that understand what you're trying to achieve and they can see, okay, well, this pitfall doesn't really matter on the long run. It's just a part of the, it's just a part of the process and we all go through the up and downs. But if you talk to people that really care about you or people that are, like we were saying before, very scared to take their own steps or just want to prove you wrong because that helps their own decision in their lives, mm. they get, oh, you know, see, it doesn't work. Oh, too bad. Why don't you go back to the comfortable, you know, what you've got, you know, don't risk things that, you know, are already pleasant and comfortable. Mm, so absolutely. I guess to, to answer the question, like I, I try to really go inside myself and, and remember that they, most of the time, people that don't believe in what you do or that are being negative um, towards your life changes, it's, it's because they really, really care about you. They love you and they want the best for you and they just don't understand or they can't vi envision what it is that you're trying to, uh, to accomplish. And that's why they, they, they're trying to stop you. They're trying to influence you. And it, it's just up to you to make the decision of where do you want to go and then just surround yourself with people that, mm -hmm. that understands and support it. And that's helped me a lot in that process. Yeah. So important to gather the right players, isn't it? For yeah. your journey, because these are, you know, as, as um, you know, the old saying goes, right. The five people that you surround yourself with most are 
who you will be influenced to become. You know, we are at the end of the day sponges as humans. So it's very easily, especially again in that vulnerable state in our journey to be influenced by the noise and, and verbiage that's coming up. And it starts to subconsciously produce a reality, right? That we are, we then see. Right. So the only adjustment you can't really control sometimes that subconscious as well. You know, if you're not in this meditative mode constantly every day. So the, one of the easy things to do is just actually physically either remove people or spend less time with the people who are no longer in alignment. Right. You can still, you know, have parties with them and hang out with them socially. But where you want to invest more, more of your time. Right. And energy with our people that are going to help you and support you towards that life that you need. Because it does take a village. It takes life change isn't easy. And if it was so easy, everyone would do it. Nobody would be needing therapists and coaches and so forth. Right. Like it's a hard thing. And to it's do. something that, sorry to interrupt you, but I can, I can relate to that as well in the sense that I've got friends that, you know, I love, they're like, you know, like siblings to me because we spend so much time together and, and, um, and they are fun to be with, but I, I also have learned to, uh, notice when I'm with people that drain me of energy or makes me believe less in the things that mm. I'm doing or, yeah. and being quite attentive to that. And that's, that's also helped a bit. And, and exactly what you're saying, you don't need to cut them off, but just be mindful of what mm. type of time you're spending with them and be mindful of how often you spend time with that and how you balance that up with, with people that actually give you the energy to keep going. Because the other thing is just to remember, like what feels good for you usually is good for you. And when I say you, I like, it's based on my own experience, obviously, sure. but um, it really, that has really helped me a lot to try to, and still, you know, I have, you know, inner critic that it's, it's very, it's working very hard uh, regularly, my inner critic. For sure. Uh, and, but, but you just, somehow the more you push forward, the, the easier it gets to, to ignore that or at least, you know, dance with it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, it takes practice. It's not been, people set, tend to want to have this miracle worker thing of like, I should be mm -hmm. feeling it like this in this state of mind because someone else, some influencer I, I, I follow is always brave all the time, but no one ever sees what happens behind closed doors, right? You can only yeah. sort of, um, you know, compare yourself uh, to you, right? As Ella said, it's like, you can't compare yourself to, it's easy to sort of look at influencers and look at people that we admire. And, but they're like five, 10 years ahead of, of what you've been doing. So it's easy to see their success stories but the only person you should really measure yourself to at all times is you know am i a better person and am i more uh, uh, am i living a life more effectively than i was last year right or last month yeah. you know and if that has improved then you have you have won a step you know but if you compared yourself with like someone else out there who you have no idea how it got they got to get there you know or you have no idea of how it is that they have um you know what obstacles they've gone through to get there it's not the right it's like compare comparing apples and oranges and you can feel yeah. super deflated right when that happens and i think that that's uh, just to add to that um what what's helped me a lot is for example like ella is you know a few steps ahead of me but it's it's been so good because i can relate to her and i can i feel a lot like we're very similar as people and just having someone that is, you know, trailing a similar way and, and functions very similarly, it, it makes a lot easier for me to, to believe in, you know, like, well, I can do it too. And I think that it's, it's just exactly what you're saying. Like we, we tend to look up to the people that have done it for, you know, like you're saying 10, 15 years and they got a success and mm. um, you know, whatever. And it, that's fantastic. Don't like, don't disregard them, but I think it's good to seek out people or like along the whole journey so that you can see, okay, well, this is what it's like when you're here. This is what you like when you, what it's like when you're here. And that way it's, it, it doesn't create this massive gap between where you are today and, and where you want to be because so true. sometimes that can be very um, unmotivating or you, you've got a great day where you're feeling pumped and you've got lots of energy, then that's perfect. Then there's no limits, mm. but quite a lot of times, you know, every day it gets you and, you got to be ready for that. But then it, it's a little bit easier if you, um, you know, Ella's taught me about routine, for example, it's uh, it's not my stronger side, but it's something that, you know, keeps you going. And if you know that, okay, well, I've got one step here and I've got one step here, then it becomes something to work more toward. manageable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and you, I, because I'm very impatient as a person, it's very good for me to have, I love the, the three month goals, for example, yeah, they're perfect. Goals. Just like yeah, ninety ninety day mm -hmm. goals, because it helps to um, 
you know, set steps. It's very um, attainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, we talked a little bit about recognizing the critics, which is yourself and the other people, and actually understanding the intent is super important, not to feel bad about people, that they're actually stomping and shitting on your dreams, but actually they're either projecting, right, their own insecurities, or actually it's, it's a sort of uh, language of love. <laughs> Even though it might not sound like it right away, uh, it can absol absolutely be, you know, their worries, concerns, like my mom, for example, that's how she shows concern. It's like warning me about all the things that can happen to me uh, that can appear like, shitting on my dreams but actually when I peel back right the words she's actually using and sort of like her fear-mongering tactics she's very good at that uh, it, it actually is the intent of trying to make sure I'm okay right so that you yeah. can feel less bad about that the people that you love are sort of you know poo-pooing on your dreams now Felicia um, you know one of the things that uh, I know people struggle with a lot you know is uh, how to use the right words, right? You know, when we communicate and converse with people in our lives, uh, you know, emotional intelligence is a skill set, isn't it? You know, a, a way of how we translate what we want to do in our lives uh, without making people feel bad about their lives, you know, and how to also thank people potentially, you know, for their concern without it being like, can you just stop nagging at me and so forth. Uh, Felicia, how have you sort of navigated um, you know, these, these conversations that could be difficult, you know, like when maybe if you're telling your partner that you're no longer going to have a full-time job uh, and that you are now doing this thing or telling your parents, you know, uh, you're giving up like what you came to Australia to do, right? And now you're changing yeah. the course. Like, you know, how have you navigated that, those difficult conversations to ensure that um, these people can still help support you through your journey, uh, but isn't going to make you feel bad about the decisions that you are currently making. Mm. And I think, um, first of all, the confidence is, we're going to say in Swedish, it's A and O, doesn't make any sense. But basically the key is, I think, confidence. And, and to, first of all, have that conversation when you feel good about your decision and, and have it when you know why you're doing it. So you're clear and maybe also think about like what are the things that they're going to think about before you have this conversation? What, what are they going to con be concerned about? And what are ways that you can mitigate that in the conversation without blowing that up? Mm. Um, it's definitely easier said than done, but it definitely can be done. Um, what should I give as an example? I mean, a lot of times I think it's also very important to say that I know, you know, thank you for, for caring about my life and, and my decisions. Um, but I, I've made this decision. I think it's very important to say that I've made this decision um, and I will, you know, put my best efforts in to see where this leads. And I really believe in that um, this will generate this, this, and this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a financial um, outcome or anything, but it, it's to be, to be quite clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve and why you are doing it yeah. that often helps people to to understand and they may not still understand they may not still understand it, but but it's just again remembering to to thank them and acknowledge the the worries that they have i think that they're very important so that they feel that you completely understood what it is that they've tried to communicate to you um and um and yeah just just be confident about the decisions that you've made that, that yeah. they're the things that that's helped me a lot. I, I'm not the best one in articulating things, especially not in English, but, um, but, but they're the things that I, that has helped me a lot. Yeah, I think that idea of acknowledging is a great thing because sometimes when people don't, like, especially moms, right? Like, they're like, yeah, did you hear yeah. me when I said your <laughs> life will be over? Uh, like, and if you're like, no, like, and then it, they don't sort of don't shut up, right? And the thing with critics or even, you know, mo mothers in general, uh, they just want to be acknowledged. They want you to, know, they want to know that you've hurt them and that you are responsible, that you do know what you're doing and you know what the consequences may be. And she may not understand it, but she wants to feel listened to. And that is actually such a good point, Felicia, that the acknowledgement helps to soften often, you know, mm -hmm. the nagginess of how people may warn you about things and, and helps you to say, hey, thank you. I, I understand your intention of, you know, being worried for me. Uh, but I also want you to know why I'm doing this and why it's so important to me. And actually making yeah. the request, I, I find that I'm, I'm quite type A in a lot of ways where I take on like the weight of the world on my shoulders and I don't tell anyone of how to help me because I feel that's like a point of weakness. You know, it's like part of just mm -hmm. my personality. Mm -hmm. And what I find that is that people actually don't know how to help until you make that request. For some people, mm -hmm. it's about helping them literally physically you know go and move houses and do things and some people just need a listening ear and some people actually just need words of encouragement 
right? You don't have to understand what I do or even give me advice about how to do it, but it would be really great for you to sometimes give me a hug and just say, you're doing a great job and that you're, you're awesome for being brave to lead this courageous life. And that can sometimes be, uh, the, it gives people a tool, right? To use, to help yeah. you without guessing what it is that you, uh, they think they have to do for you. Um, exactly. Ella, what about you? Like, you know, how has been, like, how have you strategically sort of enrolled the right people in your life? And also maybe even existing people, how, how have you made those requests for support or find new support systems uh, in order mm. to help you in your journey? I think um, what you just said there is, is, it's been a huge revelation for me recently. Um, because I would tell a lot of people about the stuff that I was doing and I, I swear, I think it was for my own entertainment half the time because I knew that they couldn't give me any sort of support. Like it was just part of like, I'll just tell this person because it's more fun than what they can tell me. Like that, that's what I, if I'm being honest, that's where it used to come from. Now sort of being more selective with who I choose to tell things to or go into detail anyways um, about that. The, for me, like I actually found I was... Um, met with more resistance when I was overconfident. Um, just, just a bit different to you, Felicia, maybe in the, in the delivery or just my, my nature. Um, I think maybe sometimes I could come across as like, I have all the answers and like, I know better than you. Um, and that would seem to prompt people to try and pick holes in my plan or my strategy. Um, and that never, never was a good experience for either of us because I'd get defensive about what I was trying to do. Um, and, uh, there, there would be nothing for them to contribute other than smile and nod and go, cool, well, good luck with that. So what I've noticed is the more that I'm sort of, um, maybe reduce my bravado or confidence about the situation and be super honest about what I'm going through. Um, uh, and even, you know, for example, bring up areas that I'm like not 100% confident in. So I might, you know, talk to them about my loose plan of like, this is what I'm trying to achieve and, and share with them some of my fears. Um, because what I've found people want to do then is they go, oh, I, I could, I have an answer for that. I might be able to help her. And so rather than focusing on actually picking apart the positive plan, they're, you're giving them an opportunity to help you on the spot. And they're much more likely to kind of buy into your idea um, along the way. So, you know, I might say, you know, I, I'm planning on, you know, transitioning my business to, to, to move to, towards this direction, but I'm not really sure, you know, how I go about validating that. I'm sure I'll come up with a plan, but you know, this is sort of where I'm at at the moment. Have you ever experienced blah, blah, blah. And this obviously depends on your audience. Cause if you're talking to someone who's never done this before, that's not necessarily relevant, but I've tried to surround myself with people who I can learn from. And especially one of the reasons I'm loving being in Bali is I, the, the quality of my group of friends uh, and the people that I can learn from, even just my housemates has like quadrupled in value to my life. You know, I, I can sit there crying over a coconut one day, like a bit bummed about a decision that I've made. And rather than coming in and going, you'll be all right. They're like, talk to me about what's going on, <laughs> you know, and, and they'll, they'll help in that way. But I think another thing that's been useful, and I will continue to experiment with this, um, you know, especially when I start talking to my mum more about the plans that I've made, because I've made some big life changes recently, um, we'll, we'll be specifically telling her, you know, I'm scared about this, or um, this is something I'm thinking about what how you can help me is like you said Lydia about you know whether it's a hug or whatever like for my mom it will just be having confidence and faith in me and obviously if you see that there's something that I might be missing or that I might not be thinking of maybe make the suggestion um but know that you know I'm constantly seeking your approval and it means everything to me to know that I'm making you proud mm -hmm. so if that isn't happening or if that is happening tell me because that's what, what I'm doing in this, in this relationship. And that requires, you know, a certain type of relationship for sure. But I think for me anyways, I've gone through a bit of a, um, an awakening recently is the best way I can describe it. And I've learned to just be more genuine and honest and to put on less of a show for people. It's okay that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like it's fine. It's fine. Like I usually find a way. Um, but I, I do, I need people's help if I'm going to get from A to B. So being super genuine and honest with them about what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do, if I think they can help me has opened up opportunities for people to contribute in ways that, that I, that I wouldn't know. And just ask, asking more questions, even something simple like that, you know, mm. it's rather than me sitting there talking about, Oh, I've got this big plan. It's so great. <laughs> what do you think about that plan? You know, and, and obviously there's a filter you know, for like what's useful information and what, and what's not. But I found the more 
vulnerable and um, genuine and forthcoming I can be with, with my lack of not knowing what I'm doing. It just gives people more of an opportunity to want to help rather than sort of pick it apart, if that, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to add to that that I I just want to clarify. I didn't mean exactly to like lay out a, a complete plan for them, yeah, as, sure. but but more so like saying notifying that I've I've made the decision. I'm doing this for me, and then you can be open again. I'm just clarifying my experience in that. Um, yeah, just to say that like this is this is my decision, and. Um, and then be genuine about any unclear things. Um, mm. Yeah, so I think as well, I agree with you. It's, 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 because we do have two very different personality types, and you and I are really good friends as well. Um, and I think it's, it's actually interesting how we will both have to adjust the way that we deliver information based on how we usually are. Like for me, mm. my guard needs to come right down, and I need to not be a know-it-all in order for me to get support and help from people that I need help from. For you, it might be that your confidence levels and your, your resolve needs to step up a notch so that you can kind of protect yourself from you know, some of the influence that other people might have around you. So it's actually really good to see both sides of the coin because everyone has different personality types. Everyone you know, interacts with people differently and you, you kind of need to adjust differently. Like one approach isn't gonna work for mm. everybody. Yeah, but so I think it's, it's good that you're saying about not laying out to, to like, it, this is a solid plan that, you know, I, that well, that's going to happen. I think it's good to, to be open about, be open about that as well. Um, yeah. yeah we definitely, were talking about like, this. I've had, I've had to, to be very like discerned about like, I'm, I'm making this decision and because it's important for me to do these things. But then by nature, um, like the relationship that I have with people are generally quite, you know, oh, what do you think about this? Because exactly what you're saying, you, mm -hmm. the, the closest people that you have around me, well, that you have around you and um, that I would have around me is, is the people that I would have to be, um, I would, like you're saying, have to step up a little bit to like, I am, I'm certain about this. Um, but to still have that open conversation because mm. exactly what you're saying. Otherwise it is very likely for people to start to pick it apart. Um, mm. But yeah, so just be, a, yeah, they, I, I really liked your, your addition to that. Now I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, our worst critic, which is ourselves, right? I don't know how my hair became like a, a lioness, like from like the last. It take. looks beautiful, like, Lydia. Exactly. You know how much greasy you are so like beautiful in real life. I met Imagine. Lydia yesterday, and she is just like this ball of energy, <laughs> like you're great on camera. But people need to meet you, man. <laughs> I can't and wait I'm to meet you. And I'm a lot oilier in, in real life as well. Yeah, no, it's so good to meet no, you no, in right, real right. life. Like, I mean, we've been working together for over a year now. And it's like we've never seen each other in real life. It's so crazy. I know. It's, it's, it's awesome that we get to like have built these relationships on a digital level as well, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, and we talked a lot, Ella, yesterday when you sat on my couch in my home office, like talking a lot about our worst critics, right? And how we navigate those um, and discern actually what we really mean when we think something is so easy for people that, that are um, in anxiety or in overwhelm. Uh, you know, when we yeah. make these, like what we, you know, talked about yesterday, swooping statements of like what we think <laughs> our circumstances <laughs> about, it's so easy to jump to conclusions, be like nothing works, but it's actually not completely true. There's sometimes like, you know, certain tweaks that we have to make, right, around our circumstance and actually really see what, for what it really is, rather than actually just throw the baby out of the bathwater, you know, so to speak. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that is usually the most looming critic that exists in our world every single day. From the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed, we have this voice inside our heads that can tell us we're good enough to do something, worthy enough to do something, or if something failed, what it is that you know, it says when we have these quote unquote failures. Now, both of you, I'm sure, have gone through circumstances where certain things weren't perfectly worked out. It, you may have had a mini fail, or sometimes things didn't work out at all, and you have to sort of re begin again in all sorts of ways. And I know a lot of people who are watching this will go through this or are going through this right now. Um, and this question is for both of you as our last question for this interview is how have you dealt? 
with that inner critic? Like what are some of the rituals, practices, and like tried and tested things that you've done to be able to like make this inner critic less of a, a, a crazy monster? And how have you sort of worked with it, you know, in order to like not let some of the negativity and the naysayer piece that it has to, to dictate what it is that you go after? Um, Ella, how, what's been your main strategy to, to deal with the inner critic so far? Okay, so I guess just to sum it up, my main strategy has just been to get to know myself better because the more I can understand why I think the way that I do, the less attached I get to that. Um, I've gone through and I'm still, human behavior and understanding what we do is just, it is honestly at the core of what I, I could literally sit and do it all day. And I use myself as the case study because I know myself best, right? And I've got access to the inner workings of my mind. But I've done, actually Tony Robbins, which I know Felicia just went to, AUPW, he, he talks a lot about, you know, this reptilian brain of ours and, and our brain going, you know, having a thought and, and us being able to go, thanks brain, that's useful. <laughs> like, I will, uh, I'll deal with that later. Or actually, that's not my thought. That's just an instinctive reaction that I have to something because it is. The happiness trap, which is all about acceptance and commitment therapy, which is kind of a very science-based amazing process for helping anyone deal with stress, anxiety, and depression, and, or just generally navigating, you know, the roller coaster of life. And for me, understanding what is, um, like, why I think the way that I do and why I have responses to certain things, you know, even yesterday, Lydia, we were talking about, I'm an incessant problem solver. And so if I, if I have a problem with something, I might approach it and I fucking hate marketing. I am not doing marketing anymore. (laughs) <laughs> because I want to wipe the slate clean and start again. It's not necessarily because that's true. And because I know that I like to simplify and generalize, like I did a cult, the, the Colby test recently, which was hugely insightful for me. And I know that's naturally how I research and fact find. So to know that I even do that helps me to give less power to that statement and actually sit back and go, okay, what does that actually mean? And, you know, talk about it with, with people like you who, can, who know me and, and can kind of re- reflect back. But it's that gap between what I think and what I choose to do with that information where I've seemed to find the most um, success, really, the, mo- the most relief from being attached to things. I'm thinking things all the time, all day long. My brain is like, blah, 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 blah. All, all of ours is. But what, whether I choose to listen, you know, we talked yesterday, Lydia, about like the relationship with ourselves, like we're two people, you know, it's like, we talked about how, you know, you really need to be able to love yourself first before you can kind of give that love to friends and family and, you know, relationships. And that has never meant more to me than it does now. Like my brain is like a separate, person for me I don't have a mental disorder when I say that <laughs> we are all mentally ill in some yeah, totally but but it's about sort of separating how what my brain from like a chemical bio like what is doing and how I choose to associate with that information like that has been just you just hugely beneficial and and I don't think it's self-indulgent to, to, to work on yourself all the time because the more you understand why you do things, the better you can, you can create, create a plan. Like if I know that I'm going to, um, you know, make swooping statements and simplify things, then like bounce that off somebody and see, you know, see if, if there's, if there's something that you can, you can get back from that. And, and the more you do it, like you are saying about the muscle thing, mm. the more you do that, the more you stop and you start to make better decisions, it becomes it becomes really fun and enjoyable. And, and, and it's funny. I, I read another book. Um, I forget what it's called now about this guy who, um, who is, was able to, Oh, actually it's Eckhart Tolle's the power of now. Oh, and he yeah. is talking about separating yourself from that chatter. And he, he said, just, just leave that space and, 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 and just stop and go, Oh, that's a thought. And he said, sometimes when you create that vacuum, like you'll laugh. And when I practice that exercise, it's so true. Sometimes my brain is going like a million miles an hour in one direction. It's like this fucked up freight train that will not stop. And then all you have to do is interrupt it. And I'm like, oh my God, what is, what are you, like, what are you even doing? Like, that is just nonsense. And it's funny to me. And as soon as you- We've got to make light of it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is funny. It's such like, a monkey mind, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and, and actually, look, making, right. making things humorous is a pattern interrupt because your brain Absolutely. is so used to like making things so serious. Yeah. 
And that's the thing, right? The yeah. big core message here is about well, how you make meaning to the critical remarks that your brain gives you, right? And how you feel about the information, because there is actually a lot of insight in fear. Sure. And there's a lot of insight sure. when alarm bells go out. It doesn't mean stop what you're doing and throw it all out the window. It means something has gone wrong. In something, something's not aligned. You've done something that didn't feel right. You've listened too much into what someone else has said, or you weren't, you weren't really saying the thing you wanted to say, right? Or whatever it may be, there's always a reason why you feel that discomfort and our jobs to, as, as you know, someone who wants to grow as a human is to figure out the root of it all. Why am I experiencing this feeling without doing these sort of like sweeping statements of what we think it really is and start to dig further into why, right? Why we feel the discomfort and navigate the way we bring meaning to that information, right? As you said, like how you act on it is the predictor of what will be the outcome, right? So you can either perpetuate how bad the problem is, because the same amount of energy and the same amount of time you can complain about that situation, or you can ask the question simply of what has this discomfort brought me to realize that I need to change, mm. or what has to change in my circumstance that I do know, I mean, I don't know what I want, but I do know what I don't want, and that is great, great enough information to sort of help me put my foot forward, you know, into a new direction. Uh, Felicia, what about you? How have you navigated your like monkey chatter of a mind <laughs> as you go through uh, big changes in your life? It's, uh, it's still uh, something that we're working on every day. Um, but it's, it's interesting what Ella is talking about. And, and I come from a background of a lot of uh, soul searching and, and uh, trying to underst better understand why and what you're thinking about it, for what reasons. And it's something that I've been uh, disconnected from, uh, I think, for, for a few years. And I'm only rediscovering that in the last um, you know couple of years or so um, but it's what's helped me a lot has been to exactly what she's saying to try to understand what what are the workings of the brain and, and why like, what am I thinking at what times as well because sometimes it's a it's a fear that pops up at certain times and other times it's not really an issue but it's like for some reason this occurs when I do this then then look at that like why is that why why I'm so worried about this particular thing um, another thing is again I, I I've worked a lot on trying to change my uh, environment and the people that I'm around because what I, I tend to get very stuck in my head and then you get locked in there it's like a prison you walk around and you you have these thoughts that keep going around so for me to try to get out of my head and, and, and clear it by talking to people, that's helped a lot as well. It's sort of, because you make it into your own truths when, when it, it goes there and it, it goes on and on and on and on, whether you're aware of it or not. But again, as soon as you get aware of it, it, it it's easier to break out of it. But it does help me to, to chat to other people that, you know, that are the same or similar values that can, and it doesn't even have to be about that. It can just be to just snap out of it and, you know, do something else for a second. So you, it, I think it's all about the, the pattern breaking um, that, we, that you were mentioning earlier. So yeah. and, that's and probably, getting perspective, right? Sometimes, as you said, like just yeah. outsourcing that worry to another person. Like I just thought this thought and is it real or not? I feels really yeah. real. Like, you know, Ellen, I sat on the couch and she like said all these things. I'm like, are those things true? Like, is it like, is there real <laughs> evidence? Like, if you were in a courtroom, could you actually present evidence that this yeah. thing happened? Yeah. Or is your mind- like, I call bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you, in order to get perspective, it's hard to do it yourself because I think emotions and feelings are so, can be debilitating. It can feel so, so real. You know, that like just like children see monsters on the bed and the adults don't, but the monster exists and we have to acknowledge the monster. We have to sort of under, like make sure to, to see the monster for what it really is, right? And actually not to run away yeah. from it because I think with self development and growth, we have to face the demons. And I think that's the only path to self growth. It's not sugar, you know, sugar pumps and gumdrops. It's really a tough journey to navigate and discern, right? What is actually mm -hmm. truly happening in our reality to be able to recreate it. Right, which I think and is yeah. one thing that's helped me a lot. Is that, oh no, go, go, Felicia. <laughs> just quickly, I like it's helped me a lot to write things out. Mm. If I've got a lot of, um, and Tim Ferriss does this as well with the fear setting, um, mm, where you write out all the things and sort of um, go through them one by one, and and again look at you know how truthful is it. But but just in general, like writing a diary has been uh, a huge help for me as well because it's just 
the, and I, I write it by hand because like, I feel like it's a very different, you process your thoughts in a different ways. And sometimes mm-hmm. by putting it on paper, it, it clears out the things that you're talking about. First of all, you can get rid of it from like, you take it out of your head and you put it on paper. And um, just that process sometimes just alleviates the pressure that's going on in here. Um, but also sometimes when you see it on paper, it makes it much easier to realize that, yeah, this is, is this true? Is this bullshit? Like totally. what, yeah, it, visually, a lot of times, yeah, you can process it in a different way and you, you get another perspective on it. So I, I very much recommend that. Um, yeah. if someone J- journaling very, your but, behavior and why you thought that, and why you did that thing, like what Ella said. It's amazing when you go it. back and you look mm-hmm. at things that has, that, that has scared you previously or things that you thought, Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, you go back even a week later or, you know, it, and I look at some of the old diaries from, you know, maybe last year or things when, when things have been really difficult or I have just felt like I've been this, uh, you know, hit a wall with, I can't get any further or something is concerned. And, and you look back on it and you're like, that really wasn't an issue, which makes it a lot easier when going forwards as well, because you can look back at how did I feel about that transition or that decision or uh, how did I feel about that? Those people made me feel this way or whatever it might be. It, looking back on it, you learn a lot moving forward. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. And I think you can see the progress of thought, right? It's hard to, it's an intangible thing mindset, isn't it? It's yeah. sort of like how you feel and, and it slowly changes and it's hard to not notice that actually you have grown in a lot of ways and you, you are a step ahead a lot of times, even though sometimes your business hasn't gone anywhere specific just yet, but just mm-hmm. even sometimes like the way that you've thought things out or how faster you make decisions today than mm-hmm. two weeks ago, all that is something we have to fully parent ourselves by acknowledging that progress, which can then help mm-hmm. us to inspire and motivate us right to continue to move forward with everything um so before we actually go into the last um sort of section of like so where people can find you and what what you offer as services as part of your freedom uh based career now uh if you guys are if you guys are, that are watching and listening are interested to do what we talked about today so one of the biggest points that felicia made uh and ella as well is about uh knowing your why right knowing why you're making that escape and that personal reason to do it so that your foundations are unwavered so when people start to poo poo on your dreams you solidly know why this decision is very much in alignment with your values. Uh, there's a free gift that we're going to be offering you, uh, whether you're watching this in the video blog page or y- our YouTube channel, uh, is our um, How to Escape Your 9 to 5 uh, and, and, and Quit Your Job and Create Your Path to Freedom video series, uh, which has a three-part video series with me and a worksheet that walks you through your why, walks you through how to repurpose your current expertise into a business or freelance idea, and also how to gather the right community and people and recruit the right support systems into your escape dream. So you can download that at the bottom of this video blog page or in our YouTube cards, probably pinging up on top of us as we speak. Uh, and that will help you to navigate that. Uh, now, thank you ladies for sharing your insight. I could totally talk about this conversation ongoing. Such a good conversation to have because people talk about strategies about how to like build a digital business, but we don't talk about like strategies, how to build like the human part of like how, who we need to become in order to have the business and life that we want to have. Uh, now, where can people find you if they're interested to know more about what you do uh, in, in you know, your brand storytelling agencies or your marketing agencies? Uh, how can people find you and get a hold of you and say hello uh, to you in the World Wide Web? Uh, Ella, where can we find you? Um, so as my website has been under construction for the last year, um, LinkedIn's probably the best place to find me. Um, and I, uh, would love to hear from, if anyone's interested in working with me, I'd love to hear with anybody who helps other people. That's kind of my main, um, I guess, alignment of values with, with people. But I'm also just interested in hearing from anybody who wants to talk to me about my journey. Cause like I'm constantly fucking it up. I would love to share all my fuck ups with you. Um, that would be really great. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm, uh, after the, our discussion yesterday as well, Lydia, I'm looking for um, ways to explore more of how I can help people understand their customer better. Um, so m- more about um, moving into sort of, I guess, the behavioral element of, of marketing. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of experience with it and I want to bring it and uh, marry it with my interest and passion in, in mm. behavioral psychology. Um, so I'm, we'll be looking for some opportunities to work with people on understanding their customer, their buying behavior and how they can better build better relationships with them as a result. So Absolutely. yeah, LinkedIn is the best place and yep, we'll Rob's Facebook up. as well, although I have deleted all social media, um, <laughs> as a, as a result of a few weeks ago, but, um, yeah, hit me up nonetheless and I'll let, let 
love to. For sure. We're going to put your links up there. And Ella, I think what Ella does really well is that because she has the marketing background and the know-how, uh, you know, of how things work, right, in a digital way of people to find you, but marrying it with, like, understanding how your customers think and what they feel even before they get on your website – all that is such a great way to actually have a great marketing journey by actually first understanding uh, your customer journey, right? Of how people behave and think and feel. Uh, and that way you can actually make some of the practical things like your email marketing and your website work better for you rather than just it being pretty and aesthetically pleasing, right? It's actually going to connect and build better relationships on the di digital world. So uh, definitely um, tap into Ella's knowledge base and she's newly in Bali and like it's fresh in her journey. So this is always the best yeah. time to ask for the stories. And it helps Ella to also validate what, where she's come from, you know? It's yeah, always yeah, a great win-win yeah. situation to share information that way. Uh, Felicia, how can people find you online and uh, what sorts of uh, help do you give people in your work? Yeah, um, so LinkedIn is probably the best for me as well. I'm currently building my website um, and I'm hoping to come live very soon, but that will be linked on my LinkedIn page as well. Uh, so my name is Felicia Peterson. And um, I help with anything from marketing strategy, brand uh, storytelling, and as part of that also the uh, content production. So that's uh, photography and video is the core things there, but anything adjacent that I can help with, um, happy to. And of course, happy to share stories and help out in any way I can. So, you know, feel free to contact me. It'd be lovely to speak. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, ladies. Lydia, for can, I, can I just add something yeah, really quickly that I think is really important? So I was saying Felicia and I are good friends. Um, I introduced Felicia to you because she was so keen to know who, who I was working with that was giving me all this fire. Mm. Um, but Felicia, you mentioned before about enrolling people that are um, going to help you be accountable. I think it's wonderful that we're on this call today with each other. Mm. And Felicia and I have assigned each other uh, buddies to ourselves. <laughs> and I think that <laughs> find somebody whether it's in the ACC or beyond or whatever somebody who is on your journey whether ahead of you or behind you whatever it doesn't matter if you've got the mm. same values and the same goals mm. partner with that person as well as finding the mentor the mentor has been like the key to all of it for me if I didn't have you Lydia I'd still be spinning in circles back in Brisbane last September so I just think that's really really important like you don't have to do it alone um, yeah. and as long as people are getting you know it's that's a two-way value exchange I mm. think it, it could it work really really well so yeah 100%. like I love Felicia I love getting my calls from her she's <laughs> she's wonderful and I I, I wouldn't yeah. do this without yeah, I love yeah, the ACC idea. has given me a lot as well. Like, ditto, um, Ella, it's, it's been amazing. And I'm so grateful for all the people that I've met through Ella, through Lydia, and in Academy of Cubicle Crashers. It's that group has become like a second family. It, it's yeah. amazing. And we're talking about um, having people to turn to when you've got the closest people that they want the best for you. But it is sometimes hard, you know, you need people around you that really, you know, pushes you and, yeah, and yeah. you know, understands, yeah, the ups and downs of what yeah. you're trying to achieve. So warmly, warmly, warmly recommend that. Um, so it was great that you added that along. Um, yeah. Amazing. And also community is so important to me as well, because I think as, as we grow, in, you know, in our stages of life, we need those people that grow with us, you know, and mm -hmm. our journeys change all the time and people will change. But having people that are familiar with what you've gone through and can understand and recognize your gifts as well is super important when you lose sight of them. It's so easy to know what we're good at and, and remember, right, like what what are the successes that we've already achieved, which sometimes is can be a blind spot, you know, when we don't have mm -hmm. other people to point that out with me. Uh, so for you guys watching, if you guys have enjoyed this conversation we constantly bring in um, lots of real stories not just perspective from me of what needs to happen and what could be a great pathway for you but really we try to tap into the collective intelligence of our own community so that we can share war stories and we can share uh, ways to get to, to a place on a, on a, on a holistic and, and authentic level so that you know, there's no one one step that fits everybody right and the more that we start to share all our obstacles and all our ways of getting and overcoming those obstacles uh, is a great way to plant the seed. And you never know who's ever watching and watching your own inspiration of your journey. Uh, and I hope that this has inspired you to also share your journey so far uh, in your corporate escape journey. And uh, definitely subscribe to, know, to see more of these interviews of real people making real changes in their lives. Uh, and thank you everyone for this powerful conversation and definitely Ella and Felicia for coming here, having this uh, jam session with me. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you guys produce uh, before the end of the year and how we continue to grow our lives and business together. Thanks ladies. Thanks. Thank you.
Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths, and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your nine to five and launch a business you can run from anywhere.